for whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and for the gospel will save it. My dear brothers and sisters, in the first reading, Jesus speaks about himself as a suffering servant. While in the gospel, Jesus foretells his passion, death, and resurrection for the first time. In response to Peter's profession of faith in him as God's Messiah and Savior, like the servant described in today's first reading, Jesus lived a life of very radical obedience and conformity of God's will. Today's second reading, taken from the letter of James, reminds us that suffering is not only something to be accepted, but also something to be alleviated, to raise up, to offer to God. James explains how our faith in Jesus, the Messiah, should help us to raise the suffering of others by our works of mercy of both corporal and spiritual. <clears throat> the corporal mercy <clears throat> is you help one another to help the poor, to help the people, those who are in need. And a corporal works of mer uh, spiritual works of, works of mercy is you help some people in spiritually, somebody you can share the gospel, you can share something spiritually so that they may overcome from their difficulties. In the gospel, in response to Peter's profession of faith in Jesus as God's Messiah and Savior, Jesus foretells about his passion, death and resurrection. And today's gospel consists of two sections. First is the Messianic confession of Peter, who acknowledged Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God, and Jesus' prediction of his passion, death, and resurrection, followed by Jesus' clear teaching on the three conditions of Christian disciples, three conditions to be a true disciples of Jesus. And that is, Jesus very clearly says, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Today's gospel explains the basic of our faith as our acceptance of Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God, our Lord and Savior. And it also tells us that Christ, Jesus suffered, died and rose again to become our Savior. And finally, it outlines the three conditions. Now, if we want to be a true Christian, if we want to be a true follower of Christ, true followers of Jesus, no, we have to say, denying oneself, taking up one's cross and follow Jesus. This is the condition if we want to be the follower, the disciple of Jesus. Practically speaking, how do we follow Jesus and save our soul? Is it enough to profess that we believe in Jesus? Is it enough that you come every Sunday for Mass? If we were to arrive at the conclusion that Jesus is God and the Savior of the world, would we then be saved? Now, if you consider Jesus as a God and Savior, can you be saved? Can we be saved? Certainly not. If you just only say from their mouth, even the demons, even the Satan, no, even the Satan believe this truth. Sometimes he speaks the truth. 
and he can control our, our, ourselves. No, Jesus is quite clear that salvation requires action. Salvation requires our action in our part. Now what is the action? No, the second reading we heard, James says, okay, no, our faith alone cannot save. We need to have action to work. If I say somebody, I love you, that's all, finish. I love my parents, but when they are sick, when they are suffering, I don't even care, I don't even look them. What is, where is my faith? When my, in my family somebody is suffering, when my, my neighbor is somebody is suffering and dying, and I don't even go and say, how, how are you doing? How do you feel? Do you need any help? No, can I help you something? That is the faith and work. That's why James said, no, St. James says, our faith and works goes together. If I only pray rosary every day, kneeling down, whole day and night, no, and I don't forgive the one who, ha uh, one, the person who hates me, my faith is in vain. I don't really love Jesus because I hate the person. So, our belief, no, I say, Jesus is my savior, Jesus is my God, only saying from the mouth, but you don't even care what is happening around you, what is happening beside you, what is happening in your own family. Then we are really not allowing ourselves to be saved. No? That's why if we are to arrive at the conclusion that Jesus is God and the Savior of the world, no, certainly even Devon also believed that one. So Jesus is quite clear, salvation requires our action on our part. We must deny ourselves. To take up our crosses means to sacrifice in order to help others, in order to love others and to follow him. Furthermore, the road to salvation requires that we lose ourselves for the sake of Christ and the gospel. What exactly does this mean? No. Practically speaking, what does that mean? To answer this question, let us con first consider the way the many people live in this world. Many of us, we as Catholic, we as a believer of Christ, we live. We tend to desire that which is the easiest in the life. We always try to find very easy way, shortcut way or something very comfortable way. Most of the enjoyable thing, we want to enjoy every time. I don't want to struggle, I don't want to suffer. I want to the greatest, <clears throat> the greatest thing and the most consoling. We often speak, seek out the things that, is, that makes us so feel good and it becomes a less uh, uh, irritated for us. For example, if you could choose to fast no, uh, a bread and water or to feast on the most delicious food. Which one would you choose? You want to choose delicious food or that water and the dry bread? Which one you choose? If you would choose between a, a vacation in the nice luxurious place, a nice location or week or if you have very difficult work in your week, which one do you choose? If you have a, if you could choose a very, to drive a new car, no, very new car and high branded car or very old car, which one would you prepare? Most people would quickly pick up the very nice food. No, instead of you no know, like nice food or very luxurious vacation or very fancy new car, we always want nice, nice things, very easiest, very quick, very no need. We don't want to suffer. In his uh, in the spiritual book, the saint ascend to the Mount Carmel, Saint John of the Cross, one of the greatest saint from Spain, no. St. John of the Cross, he writes in his book, 
the ascent to Mount Carmel. He writes a very different path of spiritual life. He gives a very series of spiritual uh, words to use for prayers and meditation to help to purify our soul of every unhealthy attachment so that you can become more fully attached to God and His Holy Will. St. John says, strive always no, to prepare not that which is easiest, but that which is most difficult. Not that which is most attractive, but that which is most unpleasant. Not that which gives most pleasure, but rather that which gives least pleasure, less pleasure. These spiritual words, when read in their entirely, challenge us to the core, the entire of our being. How can it be possible? Who will choose to suffer? Who will choose to do, instead of doing easy, who will choose to do the hardest work? They quickly reveal to those who are honest, no? honest, that they often prefer the easiest one, most pleasant and the best that is the world has to offer. But what is the best for your eternal soul? What is the best for your eternal soul? Is it the things of the world or it is the things above from heaven? Which, is, which one you choose? The things which is eternal or the things which is temporary? Most of us, we will choose. No people, they choose what is temporary, which gives a more pleasant to us. Jesus teaching, no, Jesus teaching today that we must deny ourselves take up our cross and follow him is the road map to saving your eternal soul and to discovering a spiritual fulfillment that far surpasses anything this world or our flesh have to offer. But in order to understand this road map and then to follow, we often need to make a spiritual U-turn, the spiritual change in our life, so to speak. This U-turn begins with us choosing the cross on every level of our being and concludes with good, the God stripping away all selfish, our selfishness, desires, and replacing them with a desire for a sacrificial love. If you were to carefully examine ourselves, no, your thoughts throughout the day, no, you can examine, you can think about yourself silently sometime when you go home. You might find that you think about yourself a lot. No, you think about yourself a lot. I like this. No, sometimes maybe you think in your mind, in your heart, you think, I like this, I don't want to do that, I am angry about this, and I am trying to avoid that. Very often our thoughts begin with I, I, and end with me, me. Denying yourself, taking up your cross, and losing your life means that you no longer think about yourself. It means that the eyes of your soul have turned away from yourself and focus exclusively upon the will of God and the love of others. But this will never be possible until we are freed of the numerous, so many selfish desires that often direct most of our action in our day-to-day -day life. My dear brothers and sisters, today let us reflect upon that which you desire throughout your day. What occupies your thoughts the most? What are you drawn to the most? 
Do you spend most of your day thinking about how can be a better serve God and His holy will? Or do you spend most of your day thinking about yourself? Do the eyes of your soul most often turn to the selfless service of others? Or do they more often think about what you want in most selfish way? Reflect upon these difficult questions and seek to eliminate everything within you that is selfish. Doing this will enable you and me to make a spiritual U-turn. That means to change our direction so that you can carry the glorious and the transforming cross of Christ. Let us pray in this Holy Eucharist you know, so that we may always you know, follow Christ no matter in the time of difficulties, in the time of suffering, we carry our cross and follow loving our neighbors, helping them, concerning about them also so that we can move towards together in the heavenly in the journey of heavenly kingdom of God.